let's hear from Admiral Lyons first. Uh, and again, the facts will speak for themselves. Thank you, Larry. I appreciate you all coming this morning. Uh, first, let me say to the families, the unselfish service of their loved ones they represented and still represent the best of America. Now, it comes as no surprise that political correctness, regretfully, has infected every level of leadership command in our military today. It manifested itself in our counterinsurgency strategy with its restricted rules of engagement which unnecessarily put the lives of our military forces at rest. It cost numerous lives and thousands with horrendous permanent injuries, all in the failed hope of winning the hearts and minds of a tribal society. This makes no sense. Why and who decided to put 25 elite SEAL Team 6 warriors in a single helicopter? That was my first question to myself when I heard about this tragedy. Sending them in with obviously a mission was compromise. As you all know, we had to vet our special operations plans, basically with all the Afghans, that we might as well have turned them over to the Taliban. They knew they were coming. We didn't provide the required suppression fire. This, that helicopter is made to transport troops and people. It's not made to conduct a special operation in a high threat area. This was pure dereliction of duty. Somebody needs to be held accountable. This same dereliction of duty you see reflected in Benghazi today. Not to come to the aid of our diplomats and our personnel who were under attack is un-American. We know, based on a, the, well, let me go back a minute. Let me talk about the ROEs, which are mind-boggling when you go through and you examine what they are. You can't fire on the enemy, basically, unless he fires at you first. If you see the enemy walking away from an IED that he just implanted, you can't fire at him. This is nonsense. This costs thousands of lives and injuries. The same way you cannot fire into an area if civilians are present. The enemy knows our ROEs better than we do. They use it to their advantage. And when the press reports 
about an airstrike we conducted. The thought that's left out is how many of the enemy, the Taliban, did they kill? That's never covered. We know, based on the latest Pew survey of Muslim countries throughout the world that want Islamic law to be the governing law of their country. They do not want our concept of freedom and democracy We know that 80%, more than 80% of the mosques in this country preach hatred, hatred of Jews and Christians, and promote jihad. This is conspiratorial. It's borders on sedition. They should be closed down. But of course, that won't happen under this administration. In fact, under this administration, the Muslim Brotherhood has made some of its greatest advances. They, while Muslim Brotherhood had penetrated many of our agencies before the Obama administration, it certainly has been accelerated under this administration. And I am sure that many of those restricted rules of engagement had an input from the Muslim Brotherhood advisors. We know, for example, that 57 Muslim organizations wrote a letter to the National Security Advisor for the President, Mr. Brennan, complaining about the training materials that we were using to train our military to fight the enemy. That went to Mr. Brennan, who, as you know, is our current director of CIA, and as some of you know, is a convert to Islam, which never seems to get discussed. We know that based on that letter, all our training manuals were purged of any reference to Islam and terrorism and jihadists, the enemy was given a free pass. Not only was it purged, our trainers had to be, quote, re-educated, and some were disciplined as demanded by the group of 57 Muslim countries that signed that letter. Now, does this make any sense? This is crazy stuff. You know, a commander's first responsibility, which seems to have been forgotten along the way, is the safety of his men. I always felt that was paramount. I could take care of, once we assured that, the rest of it would fall in line. The mission would be accomplished. We would achieve our objectives. That seems to be lacking in today's guidance. One other point I want to make. You know, based on the Pew report, 
the concept of the Arab Spring, of freedom and democracy, makes absolutely no sense. In the same way, going back to the Bush administration, he was going to bring freedom and democracy to the Middle East. They don't want it. They do not want our concept. The Muslim Brotherhood creed is to destroy America from within by their own miserable hands. Their intent is to replace our Constitution with Sharia law. We can never let that happen. Change has to be forced on this administration. What I see happening under the Obama presidency is the ascendancy of the Muslim hood throughout the Middle East. We've dumped our tr traditional allies who were helping us on the global war on terror and now support Al-Qaeda affiliated rebels, militias, with the end result that the Muslim Brotherhood takes control. How does this protect our freedoms and democracy? This is crazy and has to stop. I thank you all for being here. Thank you everybody for staying with us. Um, uh, send our link, trentovision.tv, on this amazing three-hour broadcast to all your friends, all your lists. they got to watch this. This was a historic, pivotal meeting. See you. Bye-bye.